I think people might be surprised to realize how much time and effort, everything that goes into getting something off the ground. Well, Extra is a great example. Uh, you know, when we decided we were going to do Extra, that was going to be a, a competitor to ET. That was something we built from the ground up. I mean, it's still in the air today. And uh, I was there from you know from the very beginning of it. We created a studio and and uh, an and office operation in a in an old warehouse, uh, and um, uh, you know put together field crews and editing bays and, and a, a newsroom. Uh, it was really quite quite um, impressive. I remember when we when we had looked for months for for the right spot to do this show. We had looked at independent film lots and. and and different uh, office spaces and, and warehouses and things like that. And, and we were starting to get discouraged that we would find anything at work. And I remember one day, the, uh, you know, after after many months of looking, it was like a Friday afternoon and it was raining and it was late. And this the guy who was with me just wanted to like get home. And, uh, but it, this was our last stop. And so we went into the place and it, the, the roof was leaking, it was freezing cold. They were storing like earth moving equipment, um, you know, in, in, in part of it, the floor was, was, was torn up and it was really kind of awful. And he, the, he's wearing his, he's got an overcoat on it because it was raining and he, he pulls his, his collar up and, he's, and he looks around and he's like, let's get the heck out of here. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. We found it, this is it. This is what we've been looking for for all this time. This is it. And sure enough, we built that out and made it work. And it worked for 25 years. The company sold it uh, a couple of years ago and, and, and downsized the, the footprint of that show. Uh, but it, it, it worked for 25 years. So that's something that I was, that I was really proud of. Uh, the Rosie show and being on the road and spent a lot of time in Florida. We go to Disney one year, Universal the next year, uh, and um, you know, move the whole staff, lock, stock, and barrel there, and, and get everyone housed and get everyone set up with uh, with electronics and, and all. And that was my responsibility, along with the the executive in charge of, on, on the show. And you were, we would create uh, an environment, a production environment where nothing existed, not unlike the days on the Geraldo show. You go into a shopping mall. The one day is just a shopping mall, and people are, yeah, you're out doing their 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 Christmas shopping. Two days later, we're in there with a stage and and lights and and, and, and cameras and, and and celebrities and the, and, and the whole thing. And you know, we do our show, and, and it generates all this excitement. And we you, you do two or three or four shows, and uh, then three days later, you're striking out, and people are are going about their business again. So, you know, we did a show at a nudist colony, more than one show at, at prisons. We did a show at, 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 a, at a brothel in Nevada <laughs> on a moving subway train. I always loved doing those things because they were out of the ordinary and there was always some doubt in someone's mind somewhere that we would be able to pull it off. And so I always took great pride on being able to, uh, to say, look, we did it. In, on Donahue, we went to one of those brothels as well. <laughs> yeah. Chicken Ranch, I think it was called. Uh, well, we were at the Mustang Ranch. The Mustang Ranch, yes, that, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, 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 the the Mustang Ranch. That was one. It, that was a hard one to like have to, because I would always call my parents whenever I, because you know, we didn't have cell phones. So whenever I landed in a new spot in a new location, I would I would call my parents just to say hello and 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 you know check in on everyone, and. Um, having to explain to my mother where I was and, and, you know, the, I, and I went there so often as I was, cause I was, a, I was the advanced person. I was the person who had to scout the place and, 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 you know, meet the, the technical people there, meet the lighting people there. So I was back and forth all the time. They had a nickname for me. They were, I was, you know, I was like their, their mascot or something for, for a while. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> so in all of these four decades, what would you say would be your proudest moment or proudest job? I'll tell you, the, the, the first day that we put the Rosie O'Donnell show on the air, we were live to, to, to several markets back then. We were doing it at 30 Rock in, uh, in 8G, which I know you have some familiarity with. Um, we had all worked really hard uh, to bring that about. I can remember nights being in the office there. I moved from LA back to New York and was living in a hotel uh, and eventually got an apartment there because that that's how we did it at, at Telepix in those days. Uh, all hands on deck. And I can remember many nights being in this little office uh, in, in what had been, uh, you know, the Donahue offices uh, on the eighth floor. 
um, and, and it, with the, a really tiny office. You couldn't even, you could hardly even turn around in it. There were two desks in there, both facing opposite walls. And it, you'd look up at, at, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and everyone else was gone. Uh, and, there were, and there was, you know, one light burning, and it was in that office. Jim Paratori sitting on one wall, me sitting on the other, back to back, not even really realizing the other was there, just doing our work. That's the kind of work that we that we put into getting that show on the air. So that first day in the control room, once we went up and I, I, I saw the picture and, you know, there's a, there's a delay on this. And so I was panicked for a second because it was black for a second. When I saw that confidence return uh, that first day, uh, it was there was a mixture of like just joy and, and, and pride. And uh, it's, it's kind of emotional today because I just remember that moment so so vividly so that I, that is when I think about it I think that's probably a, you know my, my proudest moment right